YouTube family, it's Coach Rachel again. I'm coming on to do a review of the Alpha Fly 2. If you had watched my video from Wednesday, you would have seen that I was having a hard time picking between the Alpha Fly 2 and the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. And at the time I made that video Wednesday, I really didn't know which shoe I was going to run in, but I opted to run in the Alpha Fly for Houston. I'm filming this on Monday, so it was the day before it was the Houston Marathon. And congratulations to everyone who raced, got through that muggy, warm day. That was, that was, uh, ew. Uh, I don't, I can say that in temperatures if you need. That was 58 degrees at the start. And it ended up in the mid 60s, about two hours into the event. So for Celsius, I think the start temperature is between 11 and 12 degrees Celsius. So it's not terrible. There was a year, I think it was 2017, it was uh, 75 degrees. Uh, so I guess that's U times two uh, for conversion back to descriptors instead of temperature reading. So that's my favorite. And uh, here we are with my favorite uh, only available color, orange. And the shoe did okay. I did it, but the shoe did. I think, uh, I think the heat got the better of me. Uh, 5K in, I let go of the uh, sub 240-ish OTQ type pace. Well, you know, I went through the 5K mark at 19 minutes or so. And I'd gotten comfortable at that pace. The breathing rate and the effort was what I would need to do for a marathon, however, the temperature just, I could tell the, the way the body heat was just building. Uh, There's no way I was just going to sustain that for uh, 11 million miles or whatever the heck a marathon is. Uh, it's 42K um, or 26.2 miles for those who are new tuning in. That's where the full marathon distance is. Um, the shoe kept my foot comfortable even when I was sweating through the thing. Uh, no chafing, no issues. When I was on a training run, I did feel like on my left foot, I felt like the insole was pushing into the inside of my arch a little bit. But come race day, I had no issues. My feet are fine. Uh, my Achilles are slightly tender, but that, that's a known kind of a quirk with me. My right one gets a little tight every now and then. And then for those who don't know, about two years ago, I had Hoglund's correction surgery on my left heel and made that um, annoying little bump go away. Uh, thank you to a very nice doctor uh, who uh, gently took care of all that. So overall, the body held up. I think these shoes played a part in letting me run healthy. Um, I'm not sore really too bad or anything. I mean, when the wheels come off the wagon after 15 miles, I not really racing the whole marathon at that point. So anyway, that's, that's kind of what happened was, uh, even though um, the paces changed and my expectations changed, I was still able to at least think about the shoes a little bit while I was, I was running. So for those who are considering the Alpha Fly and need perspective for anything from six minute to seven minute and change pace, those were the paces that I ended up operating at in, in the actual race day. Uh, great, great shoe. It's soft. It, it does have a good transition. When I did try on a pair of the original Alpha Flies, which are also a great model, um, I did I did notice a little of a hesitation if you really roll forward through the toe. It almost was from about here. It just almost be like a little clunk when you were coming up. Now, with that being said, if you are a midfoot, forefoot runner, I don't think you're going you're going to notice that. I think that was me noticing that a little bit when I was going back on my heels a little bit more. So if, you, if you're a heel striker, you're, you might have a longer transition lag from heel to toe. It still will be an effective shoe. It's going to keep you safe while you go out there and run. Uh, so don't, don't worry too much about that. It's soft. It's, it's responsive enough for distance races. I think if you were to put this on a track, that, that wouldn't be too good. That would be a, that'd be a no bueno uh, activity. And then I think the, the nice feature I'm going to say is the kind of this collaring. I did see a lady with an untied Alpha Fly and her shoe was on nicely. As I, I, I was wondering if that would be the case for someone who you know, came across an untied shoe and the shoe stayed on. She didn't seem to notice really that her, well, or she would put it out of the back of her mind. 
So that the collaring came in nicely, so I didn't have to really crank down on these laces. There was enough toe box width. I don't I don't have a massively wide foot or anything like that. I think it's pretty neutral in that regard, normal width, slightly high arched, and then with slightly sensitive heels. The uh, there was no rubbing in the back side of the shoe. This kind of cornered padding here, where it's just a little bit removed in the very back, but here uh, gives a nice gentle squeeze in and around the Achilles without actually compressing that tendon. You want that tendon and the sheath that covers the tendon to be able to move freely. You do not want that restricted kinking in any way. It's just like a garden hose. If you kink a garden hose, you don't get water out of it. Think of water as blood flow when, when you're talking about your extremities. And then particularly down to the ha ankles, hamstrings, they don't get as much blood flow as some other parts of the body. So that was well designed. And you know, the Saucony's that I was also you know, considering, and really up until the day of the race was considering, they also cup around the heel just fine. A lot of the manufacturers of the last couple of years have I think responded quite well to people's concerns about Achilles pressure points chafing. You don't want a bleeding Achilles, you don't want Bunyan's getting annoyed if that's an issue for you, Any, anything like that. And I think these uh, shoe manufacturers have taken good care to alleviate those concerns. So I just wanted to hop on and kind of conclude Wednesday's video in case you were guessing, well, why didn't she not talk about that at the end? So I didn't mean to tease anybody if that's how it came across. So again, um, the Houston Marathon, I did use these Alpha Fly 2s. If there's other aspects of the shoe you would like me to talk about uh, in, in so far as my perceived, you know, effort made in them or any any little subtleties about it please sound off in the uh, comments anything i hadn't thought about please do ask and i'll also do a video on the Saucony's. they they definitely deserve it and they're they are a shoe i'm going to race in because i uh shout out coin to get these shoes so i'm going to beat them into the ground and i do have the next percents um from nike there's another that's a shoe i'm more accustomed to and i I think that's a great half marathon and 10K shoe uh, for little bits here and there on the track when I'm doing a workout. I like to indulge and use my next percents and go fast and feel fast, uh, kind of fast, sometimes fast, but not too much though because you know too much of a good thing. Um, you don't want to get your feet lazy. That's the kind of the antithesis to carbon plated shoes. Is can make you feel a little bit lazy. They, they're going to take care of your feet, but that big toe joint, you want that active when you're running. And if that goes to sleep, then the planner goes to sleep, your calves kind of go to sleep, and then when you wake them back up, you can strain something. So there is a balance where if you're running quick enough in the shoe, they can be hard on your calves if you have good, good toe-off mechanics. But for, I think, a lot of the population, you know, an average marathon is around four hours, so you're more likely to be a little bit further back on your feet with less toe off. So that, that would just be something to consider. Don't do too many runs in carbon plated shoes. And so as for what's next for the channel, I did want to highlight briefly that there's going to be a video with my good friend, or well, a series of videos actually, with my um, good friend Kyle Hefner. He uh, coached me a few years ago. And we wanted to kind of go step by step through preparing for a marathon, uh, starting with the you know, the head game of how to, how to prepare and wrap your head around a marathon and then into a bit of the training philosophies and modalities that you can implement in your own training plans. And then race day preparation, whether it be nutrition or revisiting that head game, is to get everyone kind of comfortable and happy with the notion of running 26.2 miles or a half marathon or ultra. And if you have any questions or anything that you want me to focus in more when I do talk to, uh, Kyle, uh, do let do let me know, or if you have any other training type of questions, shoe reviews, or any content that you would like to see happen, uh, please sound off in the comments. And uh, look forward to reading everything. And thank you again for your time. And take care. And until next time.